And for more perspective on the crisis in France, let's bring in Thanos Dematis. He's a European affairs analyst and executive director of the Association of Foreign Press Correspondents in the U.S. Thanos, thanks for so much for coming on the show tonight. So Macron survived two no-confidence votes by a very narrow margin. More than 8 out of 10 people in the country are unhappy with the French government's decision to skip a vote in Parliament to raise the state pension age to 64. Macron is facing huge backlash as a result. But this is a pledge he ran on to secure his second term. Did he bite off more than he can chew? And could this cost him his job? Thank you, Karina, for inviting me. First of all, I think we need to remember one major situation, which is this is the second term of Macron, and Macron plays everything in this game of sustaining his political legacy. He put all his political risks on this uh, law, uh, retirement law, raising from 62 to 64 the retirement ages, and he doesn't seem uh, willing to succumb, to retreat, to withdraw this law. Instead, as you mentioned before, uh, he even used his constitutional power. He triggered the constitutional power to vote for this, uh, to pass this law without the vote in the parliament. The one side is accusing the other now of who is hurting the democracy the most. Uh, the opposition parties are accusing Macron for triggering this constitutional power. And on the other side, Macron is sending the message that this government is political stable. But is it political stable? I think that what we are going to see in the next couple of weeks is uh, that uh, this uh, no-confidence vote that fell short by only nine votes will exacerbate the political legitimacy question of uh, Macron's government. It may not uh, fall apart, at least at this moment, but according to many analysts, the chances for stability for President Macron government is, uh, is lower and lower. Um, I think we also need to, to remember that things are not finished here. Uh, the President uh, Macron's government may have sustained itself. However, demonstrations, uh, strikes, occasional violence are on the landscape of what is happening in the next uh, days. You mentioned about Thursday, the biggest, another big strike that has been announced. And the question here is, what's next? We need to remember that back in 2006, uh, the French president has succumbed from a law that has triggered a lot of social unrest. It was a law related to young uh, contracts and related to their employment rights. Macron doesn't seem he is willing to retreat, to withdraw this law. And I see, I think that we're going to see even um, more, uh, even harder political backlash from the opposition and even a more intense political classes in, in France in the next uh, weeks and months. And unions and many citizens say there are other ways to make sure the pension scheme doesn't go bust and keep the official retirement age at 62. But how is that possible with a growing aging population? France already has one of the lowest ages for retiring among OECD countries, and this looks like it is going to go through now. Absolutely. We also need to remember that France is the cornerstone, I would say, of the social welfare of Europe. Uh, French people are, um, are, are, are big um, fans of the social welfare. They expect that the state needs to take care of elder people and that they, are, they need to have access in certain social benefits. This, this is at the core of the European spirit and European philosophy, how Europe has been structured. However, on the other hand, there are fierce economic numbers here that, according to the Organization of Economic Development, for example, uh, France is using almost the 14 percent of the economic output to pay off uh, pensions. Um, and this is not sustainable in the, lo in the long term. So on the one hand, we have the, uh, the side of the hard economic statistics, and on the other side, we have the principle of the social welfare um, that um, French people want to be preserved as the spirit of Europe, as the spirit of uh, liberal democracy in France. Um, unfortunately, what we have seen in other circumstances in other European countries, I can bring the example, for example, of my home country, Greece, people may 
think that they need to have access in social welfare, they, mean, they need to have access in social rights related to their pensions, related to their health care. However, the, when it comes to markets, when it comes to budget, when it comes to financial data and statistics, truth mm -hmm. is much, much harder. And from what we see, Europe is going through the process of giving up some of the social welfare uh, rights in order to sustain um, the budgets of its uh, mm -hmm. countries in Europe. All right. Well, we will have to see how Macron survives this exactly. and does the PM continue in her role. We'll have to leave it there. Thanos Dimadas, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you.